Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Welcome to another edition of Alaska Weather. Today is Thursday, October 12, 2017. Thanks for joining uh, me tonight, Kimberly Hefner. When we're not here, you can always call our 1-800 number, 1-800-472-0391, or you can always check out our website by going to weather.gov forward slash Alaska and clicking on the location of your choice. In just a moment, we're gonna be on to your public marine and aviation forecasts. We're gonna start out the day with looking at some weather headlines. So just stepping over here to the side, you can read them along with me. Uh, you can see that we're gonna see a fr front that's gonna spread snow and rain east, and this is gonna be going through Friday. Uh, snow across the interior areas are gonna be expecting two to four inches, and this is primarily along the higher elevations, and we're also gonna see some along the west coast. Now the west coast is going to continue to see windy and coastal flooding and this is going to be through friday and also we will be watching a new low that's developing across the aleutians so this is developing on friday currently we have some watches um, sorry warnings and advisories out across the area let's work our way from the north along the arctic coast here we have a high wind warning out for winds that are gusting up to 60 miles per hour out of the east direction and that's going to continue through the late night hours um, ending in the early morning on friday and now across the western areas of the state the areas highlighted are going to be experiencing some very gusty winds and coastal flooding inundation so expect uh, higher rises along the coast between three to six feet above the normal tides and this is going to cause some beach erosion and also flooding in low-lying areas so we're uh, looking at these warnings and advisories to be out through uh, mid-morning on friday now along the Alaska range, we also have some higher winds here out of the south to southeast direction, gusting through the uh, higher summits between 40 to 50 miles per hour. And that's gonna be continuing through the overnight hours. Now let's take a look at the map for the coastal inundation. You can take and look at the arrows and read the location of your choice. But basically just to sum everything up here, we can see uh, some coastal flooding with the surges between four to seven feet at the highest. And then the areas affected are along the Seward Peninsula and on towards the Yukon Delta. So be sure if you're in those areas to stay clear of the flooding and keep everything off the beaches that you value until this storm system passes. Now let's take a look at the satellite. Uh, this will give you a clear image of the storm system that's bringing all the problems across the west coast. Putting this into motion, you can see the spin here is in the northern areas of the bearing. The frontal boundary was positioned across the western areas of the state this afternoon, bringing a large fetch of moisture across the state. Uh, you can tell this is a mature system because it's got some very cold air wrapped up into it and a little bit of a dry air intrusion there coming up through the eastern areas of the bearing. Now let's take a look at the eastern areas of the state. Across the southeast and the panhandle, they saw a break in sunny skies today. So nice conditions through that area today. The eastern areas of the state, however, did see some patchy fog. So might have been a little bit clearer above, but the low uh, conditions were bringing some patchy fog to those areas. Across south central and back through the southwest, clouds have overspread the area with rain moving into Kodiak Island as this front was pushing into the western areas of the Gulf. Now let's take a look at your surface map. The low pressure system to the north here is a 962 millibar low this afternoon and it is beginning to weaken so this occlusion is across the state with the frontal boundary. Uh, it's just to the east of it we're seeing some light snow developing along the Copper River Basin all the way up through the northwest coast. There's that patchy fog along the eastern and northern areas of the state. And notice the tighter gradients across uh, the western areas of the state. This is bringing those very gusty conditions as we have 
a high gradient between the low and high pressure off to the east. Now let's take a look at the southern areas of the Barren. We did have some clearing behind the system. However, the dusty flow was prevalent. As we head into your forecast tonight, this, this pattern is going to stay dry across the southern areas of the Bering, with the wet conditions moving further east across the state. Now, uh, the frontal boundary will not yet get to the southeast during the nighttime hours, so probably another clear night for the southeast with light snow developing across the eastern areas of the state and north to the Arctic coast. Remember, gusty winds are going to be affecting these areas as that frontal boundary passes through. Now the north will see light snow showers from the Brooks Range and we're going to see patchy fog conditions all along the west coast. Now the low pressure system across the eastern areas of the state is going to bring bringing a mix of rain and snow as we have a cold air mass wedged in on the eastern areas of the state and just slightly warmer conditions moving in on the backs uh, along the frontal zone uh, temperatures were moderating in the 40s so mainly light rain continuing for the western Alaska range and here's that rain moving into the southeast locations the boundary is going to be passing mainly um, into the afternoon hours uh, with the boundary tra uh, traips down through the Dixon entrance that will definitely not be moving very quickly so light rain through the day with some light snow uh, white pass is expected to see up to two inches of snow in that location now across the bearing here's this next low pressure system that I mentioned that's going to be quickly developing it's not going to be terribly strong but it's going to be significant enough to hold as it moves across as we head into Saturday you're going to see this low pressure system moving into the Gulf of Alaska at 994 millibars not a strong system but enough to bring some rain across the Gulf waters now across the southeast, we're going to see some light rain continuing into the beginning of your weekend. And now along the southern tier of the state, looking for some light snow and rain to develop, mainly along the higher elevations. Across the interior, expect some snow conditions. But one thing to notice about this map is how the pressure gradient, you don't see as many lines, so that means the gradient isn't as tight. So this difference is going to mean that your Saturday is going to have lighter wind speeds out of the south direction across the west coast. Now, uh, the big change across the north coast is going to be some ongoing snow conditions. We do have a boundary that's stalling in this area. So primarily that stronger easterly flow is going to stay along that Arctic coast. So look for the patchy fog and snow conditions to continue to the north and a relatively drier day across the interior and south areas of the state on the backside of this low pressure system. There'll be a few showers, but not much accumulating. Now let's take a look at the bearing. We have another low pressure system off of Kamchatka that's going to be pushing and reinforcing another cold air mass, uh, primarily just rain along with this system. But that just means that this system is still staying in an active pattern. We'll see showers continuing across the Alaska Peninsula with that gusty air flow, a little bit tighter gradient, so westerly flow will be coming all the way across the bearing between 20 to 35 miles per hour. And like I said, uh, on the western areas of the Gulf, we will see some rain making it over to Kodiak and primarily to the eastern areas of the Kenai. The western areas might stay a little bit drier as this wraps around and gets wrenched out over across the mountains. Now let's go take a look at your temperatures uh, for Friday morning. Mainly a cold trend across the eastern and northern tier of the state. Uh, this cold mass has already been in place and Arctic Valley has seen temperatures down to 8 degrees. So quite chilly across the northeastern there. Um, as we head into the morning hours, that's going to be the coldest in the mid-teens, possibly a little bit colder for the Arctic Valley area. Now the warmer locations will be across the Gulf locations in the lower 40s. However, with the clear skies, the southeast will definitely dip down into the lower 30s um, in, for some of those locations. Now across the western tier of the state, we're going to see a moderate temperature between uh, 35 to 40 degrees, not too bad out there, and very um, quiet uh, diurnal trends there across the Bering and the Aleutians with temperatures primarily in the lower 40s. Not too much of a change as we head into Friday afternoon. For the uh, Bering, we're seeing pr uh, basically a five degree change with temperatures increasing into the mid 40s. We will see a few locations out there, however, 
touch around 50 near Dutch Harbor and the Alaska Peninsula. Uh, the warmest temperature ye uh, for yesterday was King Salmon. They hit a record up to 55 degrees for them, so uh, that was quite warm for King Salmon. They had a little, little bit of a warm surge before that front set in and the clouds uh, inundated them with rain. So across the state, we're going to see temperatures range into the mid-40s once again for your Friday afternoon. Across the southeast, looking at temperatures climbing one more time into the upper 40s to lower 50s. Now across the northern tier of the state, the coolest areas will prevail uh, between 20 to 30 degrees, just under the freezing mark, and uh, slightly cooler temperatures there along the eastern border in the mid-30s uh, towards Eagle. The Copper River will also see a few cool spots in that location. Now across the northern tier of the state, once again Saturday morning, temperatures will drop, so a very similar pattern uh, as the last few mornings. The notable changes will be cooler temperatures that are moving into the southern areas of the state. So look for temperatures there ranging from 30 to 35 degrees for m much of those locations. And that's all the way down through the northern areas of the Gulf. Now across the southeast, you'll see temperatures a little bit uh, cooler still, but not too bad in the upper 30s to lower 40s. And then across the western areas of the state, primarily in the upper 30s, which is a little bit faster. I'm sorry, a little bit <laughs> a little bit colder than what it's been the last few mornings. Now let's take a look at your Saturday afternoon. Uh, temperatures mild once again in the mid 40s with temperatures a little bit cooler for the southeast on that day. Thanks for staying with us and we'll see you in a few minutes with aviation weather. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving on to aviation weather, we're going to take a look at the western areas of the state first. We can see um, tomorrow we're going to see decreased areas of MVFR conditions across the west coast. However, there are going to be some MVFR conditions uh, remaining, just not as widespread. Across the western and central areas of the Aleutians, look for MVFR and IFR conditions there. For the north coast and from the extending all the way down into the eastern areas of the Gulf, look for widespread MVFR and IFR conditions as the front moves further to the east. Uh, we're going to see these conditions shoving off to the southeast late day on Friday, so MVFR and IFR moving into the southeast. And then IFR conditions will also remain across the eastern areas of the Alaska Range. MVFR will extend across the northern tier of the state, and then also we'll see some MVFR conditions just along the coastal areas as the next low pressure system develops and moves towards the Alaska Peninsula. Widespread MVFR conditions across much of the Bering, with um, also MVFR conditions out there still across the western waters. Now as we head into Saturday morning, look for the, these IFR conditions to creep into the west coast and continuing eastward towards Kodiak Island. Widespread MVFR conditions across the west coast out there towards the western Lucians as well. And we'll also see MVFR and IFR conditions across the Alaska Range eastern areas of the state. The northern tier will still be in the MVFR conditions and IFR up there along the north coast. And we'll see mainly MVFR conditions just along the eastern gulf and along the inner channels there. Now as we head into the afternoon hours, IFR conditions are going to be spreading into the eastern gulf waters there and creeping towards the southeast. We will hang on to MVFR conditions for the afternoon. Uh, much of the state is going to be VFR with conditions MVFR and IFR across the northern state and MVFR along the western coast into the Alaska Peninsula. Also, we'll see widespread MVFR conditions across the Aleutian chain. Now let's take a look at your passes in more depth. We will see Anatuvik go from IFR to MVFR for your Friday, and then Adigan will go MVFR, improving to VFR late day. And Merrill, Merrill Pass and Lake Clark will go from MVFR to VFR conditions, and improving for rainy as well, MVFR to VFR and Windy Pass will go IFR to VFR, while Isabel will go IFR to MVFR. Let's see, Mentasta will stay IFR all day. Uh, we'll see Tanita go IFR to MVFR late day. Portage will go IFR to MVFR, and Chilkoot and White Pass will go VFR to MVFR as that front moves in late day. Now the freezing levels tomorrow will be uh, draped across the northwest coast and 
down towards the panhandle with a rise in the 2,000 foot level to very quickly to 8,000 across the northern gulf. Now we'll see primarily a cooler air mass on the back side, so freezing levels out across the western areas of the state right at 2,000, increasing to 4,000 below the Aleutian chain. Let's take a look at the icing concerns for tomorrow. We'll see widespread icing conditions statewide and also there across the central Aleutians. We'll also see the southeast in those areas of icing. That's going to be primarily late day. The considerable to moderate conditions will mainly be across the eastern areas of the state with um, above 3,000 feet across interior locations below 4,000 feet there to the north. Now let's take a look at the jet stream. It's going to be fairly zonal just south of the chain and an amplified pattern here with the ridging uh, just north of the state and along the eastern waters. Now the pattern at 9,000 foot, we have a low pressure system that's been affecting the area. It is weakening, so basically a westerly flow 30 to 45 knots to the south of the system with a southwesterly flow moving into the state between 30 to 35 knots and a change of wind direction up there to the north around a ridging pattern just to the north there. So look for that directional change. And the 35 to 40 knot winds, they're going to be kind of um, about the same at the 3,000 foot level below this low pressure system. Now we'll see a strong southwesterly flow, 25 to 30 knots, with 30 knots hanging on across the Gulf waters and in through the southeast. Change of wind direction there across the northern tier of the state. Now let's sum up your turbulence across the area. Uh, main concerns are going to be across that strong westerly flow there, um, primarily just speed shear for all these locations, with the most critical conditions occurring across the west coast and across the bearing areas. Now in just a moment, we'll be back with your marine forecast. Andromeda. Welcome to Stargazers. I'm Dean Regas, astronomer from the Cincinnati Observatory. And I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plot Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. Autumn is my favorite season when it comes to star stories because we get to see a celestial royal family, a hero, and a flying horse. We've devoted this week's episode to the celestial princess Andromeda. Let's show you. The story of Andromeda begins about 20 centuries ago. Cassiopeia, the mother of Andromeda, was not only extremely beautiful, but extremely vain. And one day, she made the dreadful mistake of boasting that she was even more beautiful than the Nereids, the sea nymphs, who were considered to be the hottest stuff of their time. Well, they complained to their father Poseidon, the god of the sea, and it is said that among the punishments he rendered the royal family, Poseidon decided to create a giant sea monster, affectionately called the Kraken, to destroy Cassiopeia's kingdom. Sadly, the only way to get rid of the Kraken was to sacrifice Cassiopeia's only daughter, Andromeda, to the sea monster. At this time of year, Andromeda is easy to find in the sky just after sunset. You can use Cassiopeia, Andromeda's mother, or Pegasus, the winged horse belonging to her rescuer, Perseus. Okay, we have our sky set up for just after sunset anytime this week facing east. High in the eastern sky, you'll see the four bright stars that form the great square of Pegasus. Starting at the upper right and traveling counterclockwise, we have Markab, Shiat, Alpharats, and Algonib. Pegasus shares a common star with Andromeda. That star is Alpharats. Alpharats, also known by its bear designation as Alpha Andromedae, marks the head of Andromeda and is a binary star system 97 light years from Earth. To find Andromeda's foot, you can use the stars from the constellation of her mother, Cassiopeia. Look to the left of the great square of Pegasus and you'll see a W-shaped constellation of five bright stars. This is Cassiopeia. The stars from right to left are Kaf, Shidar, Tzu, Rukba, and Segen. By drawing a straight line from Kaf through Shadar, you'll run smack dab into Andromeda's foot, marked by the star Almac. Almac is a quadruple star system 350 light years away from Earth and is the third brightest star in the constellation Andromeda. Between Andromeda's foot and Andromeda's head, we have yet another star. This one is the second brightest star in Andromeda, and its name is Mirac. Mirac is a red giant star over 197 light years from us, 
and it's over 100 times the radius of our sun and almost 2,000 times as bright. Just up and to the left of Merak, you might be able to spot the furthest object we can see with the naked eye, the ever-popular and lovely Andromeda Galaxy. In the Messier catalog of deep sky objects, it's called M31. It takes a little effort to find the Andromeda Galaxy, and you have to be far away from city lights on a clear moonless night. However, to make it a bit easier, you can also use the stars from Cassiopeia to help find it. If you use Cassiopeia and draw a straight line from Sagan through Rukba and stop when you get close to Mirak, you'll be in the neighborhood of the Andromeda Galaxy. You will see a faint cloud, which, through a pair of binoculars, will look even more cloud-like. However, it isn't a cloud. It's a gigantic spiral galaxy containing a trillion stars and is very similar in structure to our own Milky Way galaxy. And believe it or not, it's heading straight for us. Now, don't worry about it colliding with us in our lifetime, though. Although the Andromeda galaxy is traveling at almost 68 miles per second towards us, it's incredibly far away and will take almost 5 billion years to get here. The Andromeda Galaxy is so incredibly far away that even though light travels over 186,000 miles per second, it still takes two and a half million years for the light of the Andromeda Galaxy to reach us. Wow. So there you have it, the constellation Andromeda, a pattern of stars with an elaborate story and an even more amazing galaxy contained within. And it's all there waiting for you to see when you remember to keep, keep looking, looking up. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Now let's take a quick look at the ice. Along the uh, coast, we're seeing some ice from Dead Horse or to Kaktovik with some grease ice all the way through Barrow. We haven't been able to see much in the satellite data, so the areas along the northwest coast might be a little bit uh, less than what we have projected on this map. Now, uh, the, with a strong easterly flow we're going to be seeing in the next several days, we're expecting the ice edge to move further to the west. Now, take a look at the southeast forecast for your Friday. We're expecting some gusty flow out of the south, uh, primarily small, small crafts across the outer waters there, 25 to 30 knots out of the southeast direction, becoming more of the westerly direction towards Yakutat with gales to the north there and across the inner channels between 15 to 25 knots with the highest winds to the north there. And seas will be three to five feet across the inner channels and the outer waters will be between seven to 10 feet. As we head into Saturday, expect um, a directional change there with southwesterly flow across the outer waters, 20 to 25 knots. Most of the area will be under small craft advisories and we'll see the inner channels mainly out of the south to southeast direction. Seas across the inner waters will be five feet and then across the outer waters, 11 feet. For your forecast on the Fridays, the North Gulf is going to have some strong gusty uh, gales out of the west to, uh, to the southwest directions there. And then we'll see more of a small craft across Prince William Sound and along the Cook Inlet uh, to the southern tip of the Kenai. Looking at seas on this day for the northern inlet and the Prince William Sound at three feet. Across the Gulf, we're expecting 9 to 11 feet, and then for the inlet, expect around 9-foot seas there. Now, as we head into your Saturday forecast, lighter wind speeds change the direction more of a south to southwest direction and a northeasterly direction for the northern inlet and the Prince William Sound. Seas on this day will be a, a little bit more settled between 4 to 5, five feet, um, 4 to 6 feet across the Cook Inlet and then the Gulf waters will be between 9 to 10 feet and the sound will be around 3 feet. For your Friday forecast for the Alaska Peninsula, gusty small craft winds cross most of the area to Kodiak Island out of the south to west directions and we'll see seas between five, 9 to 15 feet and 10 feet on the Pacific side. On your Saturday, increase of wind speeds with storm force gusts there along the south side of the Alaska Peninsula. Gale criteria for the northern side with Bristol Bay seeing small crafts out of the north to northeasterly flow uh, on the north side of the peninsula and a west to southwesterly flow heading up towards Kodiak Island. 
and seas on this day will be around 20 to 21 feet, just south of Kodiak Island there, a little bit calmer, 11 feet in the Gulf, and for the Bering, 60, 11 feet. Looking at your Friday forecast for the Aleutians, primarily a gusty day to the west there, with uh, gusts up to 35 to 40 knots across the western, I'm sorry, the central and eastern Aleutians there, to the west around small craft, 25 to 30 knots. And then we'll see seas on this day ranging between 13 to 19 feet, and we're going to see the highest seas across the eastern Aleutians there. For your Saturday forecast, winds will become primarily out of the west direction, 25 to 30 knots, and seas will range between 11 to 13 feet. For your west coast, expect a southwesterly flow with the strongest winds to the north there, uh, gales, as we head to the north, and seas on this day will be 14 to 22 feet, the highest seas out towards the central and northern waters. On your Saturday, expect lighter wind speeds overall, uh, with winds between 15 to 25 knots, so still hanging on to small craft across the Pribilof Islands and north, with seas between 4 to 13 feet. For your north and west coast, strong winds, gales across uh, the uh, Bering Strait there at 35 knots, seas the highest there at 18 feet. However, um, we do see higher seas and freezing spray issues across the Arctic coast there, and that becomes more of an easterly flow across the Arctic coast and becoming more south there towards the strait. As we head into your Saturday, still stronger gusty winds prevail across the Arctic coast with freezing spray spreading over towards Barrow out of the Winds are going to be out of the east direction, so small craft across the area, a little bit lighter wind speeds across the Chukchi Sea and south towards the Seward Peninsula. We're seeing winds on that day calm to about 20 knots out of the south to southeast direction. Recap your forecast, we're going to be seeing this front push inland tonight, bring some rain and snow as we head into your Friday. Expect the southeastern areas to get into the rain action with snow continuing along the east coast. Now, thanks for staying with us, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.